Welcome to the Minor Basketball Podcast. I'm Evan. And I'm ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. This is episode one of our ba- of the Minor Basketball Podcast, and we're excited to be doing this because, as any family or friends of ours know, we love basketball. We want to do this to show our knowledge and passion of basketball as well as learning more about the game, too. And I'm excited to be on the journey with you, Mr. Evan. You know, we're just two kids from New York City. No, trying to make it in the Bronx. From the Bronx. Okay. From the Bronx, from the borough of the Bronx. Just who just love the game. You know, we grew up, we grew up in the Mecca. We grew up seeing this day day by day. And like, you know, seeing the NBA is like a big thing to us. So how you doing this basketball journey talking about a lot about the knowledge of the game. Have it on this journey too, even though you hate on New York City and the Knicks. So well, I'm from California, so. Anyway, this will be our daily NBA podcast. And as introduction you just heard stated, we will cover the NBA season as long as there are games, talk about the games, and upload it the next day. This podcast will be uploaded on YouTube every day when the NBA season starts at 12 p.m. The basketball games start early, like around 1 or 2, and we will most likely upload it a little early to make sure. So stay tuned when that comes a possibility. We will discuss all basketball in the NBA, news such as coach hiring and firings, big trades, and big signings in the league. We won't be doing college basketball because we don't know about college basketball. We don't want to be those people that you see on ESPN that should be talking nonsense, don't know what the hell they're speaking about. Clearly, they're a sport they don't know and they don't watch, but they're paid to do so. We're not getting paid, so why talk about it? <laughs> hey, man, we wish we were getting paid for this, but nope. Mm-mm. Yep. Um, we'll be recapping and discussing the primetime Big games that happen, breakout performances, dominant displays, and making our predictions for future games. So join us on our journey by subscribing and letting friends and family who enjoy basketball know about us, and we'll provide you with a great and entertaining basketball podcast. Or you could just keep it for yourself, just to enjoy. You know, you know, it don't matter. That too. <laughs> well, we care about money, so let your friends know. <laughs> <laughs> That is for the future. As for today, the now, and this podcast, we will be discussing our predictions for the NBA season. First up, we'll be discussing championship contenders. This is a fresh new season with a short off season, I believe 71 days since game six of the NBA finals happened. But as any NBA season has, there's always the teams that you know are going to be in the race teams that you don't know. So, Ja, I swing it over to you. Who are the championship contenders for this season, in your opinion? Okay, so for me, the championship contenders that I have coming out the starting off with the Eastern Conference, I have mm-hmm. the Nets, the Heat, the Celtics, the Sixers, and the Bucks. And here's why. The Heat, it should be no question. Like, you know, they shocked the world last season or just recently, like a whole like two, three months ago, um, by just even making it to the finals. Nobody expected them to even be in the, they were dark horses and they were prime examples of what 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 a, what a dark horse was. They Nobody chose them going to the finals or anything. Nobody viewed them. They knew them that it's a good playoff team, but nobody thought they could get deep and they shocked the world in a way. So obviously they should be clear cut to be in this race as a championship contender. They have experience especially for a team that's young. Mm-hmm. But now we look at the other teams. You got the Celtics, you got the Sixers, you got the Bucks, and then you got the Nets, who, who... Celtics, here's my thing, right? They've been in this position already three of the last four years, mm-hmm. in which they had an opportunity to knock on the door, and they never truly made it over that hump yet. You know? But again... When you got that much experience going that deep, you take and you learn. And I feel like that's their opportunity to take and learn. And this is the reason why they're clear-cut. They're talented. They're a two-way team. They could do it on both ends of the floor. Jason Tatum is their star. Jalen Brown is their star. Like, you know, 
they, they could make some noise in that Eastern Conference. I feel like they have a better chance than many of the teams except for one team, which is coming up right now, the Nets. The Nets have two of the greatest scorers that we have seen. They have, they have arguably the greatest pure scorer in the game to ever play the game, or but, but most definitely the best pure scorer in the game right now with Kevin Durant, the most skilled point guard in the league right now, and Kyrie Irving. And they got a just a just an offensive. I don't even know how could you, they they got juggernaut. They got, yeah, juggernaut. They they got a machine gun everywhere in this country. They got scoring, not just shooting threats, mind you, not just shooting threats. They got scoring threats. They have KD, Kyrie, Lavert, Dinwiddie, Harris, Shamit. Like they have a lot, and they also have some inside presence with Jordan and with Jordan and Jared Allen. So just know they're coming, they're coming quick and coming fast. They're gelling quick and they're gelling fast. Sixers, they changed up their whole um since getting Darren Moore at their GM, they kind of changed up their whole roster in a way. And they went from being more inside to having more spacing on their team. Mm-hmm. But the main concern with them also is could Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, you know, it could work as that duo. I think that's their main focus. So but be on the lookout for them and the Bucks. The Bucks have the they have the reigning MVP, two-time MVP right now. So uh, say, say it again. Say it again. I'm not saying that because you, you have a strong dislike for that two-time I MVP. Have, I don't. I don't have a strong dislike. I'm just saying. I'm just saying he has a lot of flaws still that he got to work on as a player. He, as talented as he is, you know how it is when it comes playoff time. And you've seen what happened to him when it came playoff time. So that's all I got to say. For anybody who don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about the Greek freak, Giannis. And Ja, for some reason, just has this strong dislike for him because he saw on Instagram that a lot of people were saying <laughs> that he's not as skilled. So he said, you know what? That's a great argument. So I'm going to take that. And, that I'm using it. and he's been using it for the past year or so. That's okay. Look, it. Well, I, that, that, when I say he's... He that doesn't mean he's not skilled. He again, I already explained to you this before. There's three levels of scoring inside, mid range, three point. Obviously, of course, he obviously has the inside game, even though there's more things he has to add on. But outside of that, he has a little bit of a mid range game. Don't get me wrong, still got to improve in that area. But he most definitely doesn't have any kind of abilities when it comes to around the three point area. Or even like even being inside, but being like next to it, like he does not have any of that in his game. As we said, he needs he needs to polish up his game more. That's all that it is. That's all I'm saying about him. But as I was saying with the Bucks, they also have somebody also acquired a really talented two way player in Drew Holiday, one of the most underrated players in the game right now. I feel like that will do wonders for them. Mm-hmm. So, but the outside of that, those are my contenders for the Eastern Conference. For the Western Conference, the three main teams that are in my mind right now for sure is the Lakers, Clippers, and Nuggets. The Lakers won the championship last season. Defending yeah, champions. I, yeah, that should tell you a lot. And they just got better. So if they're not making a, a push, then uh, that should be telling you. If, if you think they're not making a push, you, you, you look kind of stupid. The Clippers... As disappointing as they are, they're still the most talented team in the league right now. And they're going to look to have something to prove. They bet they have no choice. They have something. To, they they, they got to prove something to us because they did horrible last season. But we're not going to get into that. And the Nuggets, the Nuggets has always been here before. And it's crazy how they have been here before. But yet, like, you know, they're a youthful team. They're a really young team. They're a really young team that has been together for where most of the players have been together for like almost like three or four years by now. And it's, and it's scary. They're only getting better. So I look, but I look for them to take from their experiences also being so young and to mm-hmm. go off with that, go far with it. And I feel like those are my contenders when looking at that Western conference. So there you go. Okay. That's not, that's not, that's not bad. Um, unlike you, though, I'm not going to try to name every single team in the Eastern Conference. I'm going to narrow it down to two or three. Okay. Uh, well, first for me, my championship tender is with the obvious, the Nets. 
KD, Kyrie, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, Joe Harris. They got Landry Shaman now, Jared Allen, and DeAndre Jordan. I mean, come on. That's the stack team. That's the team that can win. Not just this year, but years to come. Okay, so get through that. Now, secondly, I have, well, I have two teams that I've been debating on. And that's the teams that went to head-to-head in the second round against each other, the Heat and the Bucks. I think that the Bucks have a good improvement from Eric Bledsoe to Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday can play defense. He doesn't need the ball. He plays great. He plays hard. He can shoot. He can score. He's a good passer. He does everything. And he's one of the most underrated players in the league. Mm -hmm. Of course, they do have Giannis, who I am a believer in. He, he can Euro step, he can spin move, he's strong, he's aggressive, he has that mentality in him, you know, he's a, and he's a just a monster. Yeah, he could have that mentality in him just to get knocked out in the second or third round. Again. Go, go ahead, have that mentality. Let that take you far. Things will change, and I believe that he, he will show some improvements, and he will be in the race again, not for, not for just the championship, also back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back MVP. But that's a discussion for another time. And, of course, the defending conference champions in the Miami Heat. Those are some dogs. We all know this. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler, who I am a big fan of ever since he was in Chicago. He's a great leader. He's proven that now. He's not a bad teammate anymore. <laughs> so all, all those narratives went away now since he let, let the Heat to the um, finals. They got Bam, who I think is just going to keep improving each year. Same with Tyler Hero, who's the media star. Duncan Robinson, who's just a shooter. They lost Jay Crowder, which I think is a bigger loss than what people might think. Yeah. But they but they did pick up Avery Bradley, though. So yes, they did pick up Avery Bradley, but Avery Bradley's undersized. He can't guard the amount of people that Jay Crowder can. But nonetheless, that is still a good pickup. And they remain the maintain going dragon, the dragon, of course. That's my guy. So I think they're they're gonna be in this race. And of course, they have heat culture, Pat Riley and Eric Spoltra. So I I can't really count them out. I can't really but, count them out. Yeah, but I say with that though, okay, I understand Avery Bradley's undersized, but I think just their team defense as a whole makes up for that. You're just adding another defender to a bunch of dogs who know how to like, you know knows how to make everything fit defensively you know what i mean so it's just like you know even though he, obviously he's undersized you can still put him um on your best you could still have him be assigned to guard the best perimeter play on the opposing team while also trying to find schemes and other kind of systems to go against that so yeah i'm in the grand street i see what i see your point but that's for my eastern conference teams now for the west simple lakers <laughs> Lakers. I I don't have that much faith in the Clippers anymore. <laughs> uh, they lost Montrezl Harrell. That's a big loss. It's a big yeah. loss. So who? The Lakers. But I'm going to get to the Lakers in a minute. Um, They don't have... I don't think that Ty Lue is that good of a coach to bring them over the hump into the top. Yeah. Um, I really hope that PG comes through. <laughs> Because he's been getting a lot of disrespect. <laughs> and he's one of the best players of this generation. Yeah, he is. So I, I, I really hope that he can pull through in the playoffs and in clutch moments. And Kawhi, he's going to come. He's going to bounce back. I do believe that. And I do believe that they can make it to the conference finals. I just don't believe that they're making it to the champ to um finals. I don't see them being that championship contender. Well, yeah. Well, because you're right. Because let's be honest, I feel, even though I still say that they're the most, well, I'm not going to say they're the most talented team in the league. They're probably the most talented team in the Western Conference, but they're behind the Brooklyn Nets now. But, mm -hmm. but I do feel like, I do feel like they had a better team last year than they, that they had this year, than what they had this year. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just that whatever, we heard all of your, everything that happened that past season. To the reason why we felt like it showed up 
to the reason why they're the most disappointing team of that season anyways. And I feel like this that's just a stepping point, and I think they just have to learn from that. Like, yeah, of course, Doc is gone, Montrez is gone, but you can still learn from it in a way. Yeah. And um, the Nuggets, I don't feel like – I don't know if they can get back to where they were. Uh, at least not right now. There's a lot of competition in the West. And to look back at it, they really should have lost to the Jazz in the first round. Mm-hmm. They really should have. They were a team that they, – they were underdogs, you know, Mile High City underdogs, and they fought to the Western Conference, but they really shouldn't have gotten there if the Jazz just, you know – had better coaching system in place, had made their shots and had better defense and all that. And they also, so, Mike Con- they also had Mike Conley out too. And um, Bogdanovich was out too Yeah, for the series. So that's why I, I don't believe in the Nuggets as championship contenders. Now as the Lakers real quickly, because there's not much detail that I need to go into. LeBron, AD, two six man of the year nominees and the six man of the year included in that and being Montrezl Harrell. They got Marcus Gasol, who's a great pickup. I think they need to see how to integrate him into that running gun offense, however. But I, defensively, I think he fits great. Mm-hmm. Um, they replaced all everybody that they lost. The Rondo, they lost. Dwight the Howard, they lost. They got back those pieces. They got mm-hmm. KCP back, who was big time in the finals. Mm-hmm. And it's the Lakers. It's the culture of the Lakers. Dude, now, now the best franchise in NBA history. Mm-hmm. You know, so... I strongly believe in them taking it. Yes. Strongly. So, yeah, those are my championship contenders for, for the NBA season. Now, on to the dark horses. Now, I'll go off first. My dark horse, which team I didn't mention in championship contenders, are the new look Phoenix Suns. I mean, they got CP3. They got Jay Crowder. They got... Rising star, some people say star, Devin Booker. They got a, a potential great big man in DeAndre Ayton, as long as he stops smoking. Um, <laughs> uh, well, actually, no, he keeps smoking because they're not testing marijuana anymore. So oh, I guess man. it's good for him. He wouldn't have to get suspended for 25 games. Um, they lost Ricky Rubio and um, Kelly Oubre, but I really think that the additions of CP3 and Jay Crowder are big time. CP3 is a point guard in many people's eyes. You know, one of the, just a pure point guard, one of the greatest point guards of all time. You know, and he's a great leader at that. And he can show Devin Booker how to lead. He can mentor him a lot and lead him to help the Phoenix Suns get to the promised land and win a championship that they so dearly need. <laughs> For their franchise yeah. so i really think that they can be a dark horse in the western conference that stacked western conference well my dark horse for me um as much as i like your thing with the phoenix suns i feel like for me that the dark horse is the blazers i feel like again they've proven it time and time again of course, their rosters have changed over the years, but prove it time and time again, along with their star player, Dame Lillard, that they're bigger than what people look at them to be. Like, you know, they have Dame, CJ, Melo, Nurkic. They lost Whiteside, but they also they also got Covington, who's a really good 3 and D guy, who can add on to a lot to what their offense. Their offense is great. Their offense is great. They got a little bit better on defense, but that's the only thing that I see as a problem with this team outside of, of course, injuries, because they went through a lot of injuries last season too. But my thing is their defense needs improvement. I felt like with their offense, yeah. though, they could they could work a lot of teams. And we clearly said it multiple times last season, how they are a seven seed, I'm um, an eight, a eight seed, that should have never been an eight seed. And I feel like they're going to make a lot of noise after being through that situation and having almost like all their same players back now for this year to make another run to the playoffs. So I look at that as a dark seed. As them as a dark seed. Sorry. Okay, well, on to our surprise teams of this year. As you said, the Blazers were an AFC that's supposed to, you know, that weren't supposed to be an AFC. Well, my surprise team is a team, if the NBA didn't get restarted, would have been the eighth seed. 
And that's the Memphis Grizzlies. I think John Morant really doesn't get the credit that he deserves due to Zion and the hype around him. I think John Morant is a generational player. Like, you want to build a franchise around him. He already showed leader mentality in his rookie season. You don't hear about that a lot because leadership you, is not it's not taught. You yeah. have to have it in you, and he has it. Now it's just everything else. Is the skill there? Yes. Athleticism is off the charts. Like, off the charts. I wish he would stop landing on just one leg, though, because he's going to hurt himself. Yes, he is going to hurt himself. But athleticism is there. His passing is there. His inside scoring is there. His um, jump shot is a little inconsistent. I hope he can improve on it this season. Mm-hmm. But I really feel like he can lead them to a first-round victory, surprisingly. And not and it's not just him. He has a good supporting cast. Jaron Jackson Jr. is a great player. He can really do a little bit of everything. You got Brandon Clark, Dylan Brooks. I mean, Memphis, they're going to surprise some teams just how they surprised um, us in the beginning of the season and the middle of the season last year before the NBA had restarted. Well, I like what you said. I like where you was going there, but you got to also realize that Jaron Jackson is not starting the season right now. He's out for injury. So, oh yeah, you got a meniscus tear. But I, 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 I like that. But, one. It, I, but yeah, he's he's um injured right now. But by the time the middle of the season comes towards the end of the season, he'll could be back. And that's what I mean by surprise team that they can get a first round victory. By the time he comes back, they can get a first round victory. But he's such a valuable piece to that to that team, though. He's their second. He's their second best player. It's just mm-hmm. like. Like, you know, you're probably going to need him if you're trying to make some kind of push. I, but I agree with you, though. I agree with you, though, on the Memphis being a surprise team. I feel like they could make a lot of noise. They're on the rise. My surprise team, though, is um, John Mar- ja Moran's counterpart, and that is Zion Williamson and the New Orleans Pelicans. They, 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 they made a lot of big moves right now, right here. Like, you know what I mean? They got Steven Adams. They got Eric Bledsoe, of course, um, um, this offseason. And just look at the team. They they got Stan Van Gundy as their coach. More of like an old school mentality kind of coach. But like, you know, he, he's a really good coach. Outside of the fact that the White Howard got him. But yeah. But then you got to also look at their talent. You got to also look at the fact of their talent. Zion Williamson is a generational talent. We have never seen somebody that big who could do the things he could do in a way. I'm talking about in terms of our generation. Yeah. And then you got to add on the fact that you got a highly talented scorer in, in Brandon Ingram, who, 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 who's, who's broken out last season, who broke out last season and established himself as an all-star. Add on to the fact that you got Lonzo Ball, who's a, who's a, who's a, who's a good point guard. He could pass, he could defend. Shooting, of course, you know, we're not going to go into that. But, <laughs> but, but he, he, he could be, he's, he's really good to fit into the system if you're trying to do a fast break kind of offense. So I feel like they are the ones who are going to make a lot of noise and feel, I feel like they're going to ones who are going to try to make a push for one of those last two spots in, 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 in for the last two spots in terms of playoff contention. That's not a bad pick. I just, I don't think this is the year that um for the Pelicans, because one Zion's injury, um like him staying healthy, that's, that's key. That's key for them. And they lost Drew Holiday. But they did gain draft picks. That's why I'm looking for Pelicans to more of the future, maybe next year. Okay. But that is a good pick. And I can see them maybe surprise if they're able to get into the playoffs, maybe surprising a few teams. And it's not even just that. They also have um Jackson Hayes. They also got Jackson Hayes, who's really who's a really good but he needs to get minutes. Yeah, he needs to get more minutes, but he can have a high impact, especially on the defensive end, if he gets the opportunity to get those minutes. Do I think Stan Van Gundy's gonna do that for him? Probably not, but but let's see. All right. Um next are players to look out for. I'll toss it to you first. Who is your player to look out for or players to look out for? Common player, Zach Levine. I felt like he should have been an all-star last year. Finally, season. somebody from the Eastern Conference. <laughs> but like Zach Levine should have been an all-star last season. I understand that whole situation. Look at the Bulls look just look kind of iffy 
in terms of their organization, everything that's going on. I know they got better this all season. They got Do- Billy Donovan as their coach now and everything, and they do got some good young talent. But him, but he's been playing at a high level. And you call me crazy for this, but I feel like him and Devin Booker has been playing at an equal level in terms of individual talent. Mm-hmm for a good amount of season now, but yeah, he has not, get, they have not gained the recognition. Well, Devin Booker has not gotten in, but he hasn't. I just need for also for marketing to break out. Marketing is too talented and yet he is yet set to prove to us that he's a, that he's a, he's a star talent in this league. He, he's, he, 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 he's just inconsistent. Can't stay. Okay. That's Zach Levine is a great pick. Um, for me, however, I've been thinking about this a lot because a lot of players to look out for. Yeah, a lot is. of players that can have breakout performances and all that. And if I had to pick somebody, I might go with Bradley Beal. I can't go. I can't go against that. I agree with you with that one also. I mean, he's. He kind of seemed like he he has a chip on his shoulder, like he's on for a mission. I mean, he damn near averaged thirty last year. He didn't make All NBA, didn't make the All Star team. He should have been the All Star team, mm-hmm. not Zach Levine. He if he if anybody should have been there, he should have been. But since the Wizards mm-hmm. suck, he didn't get in. <laughs> but uh, they have a good rookie. I forgot who his name is, but uh, I've looked, I've seen him a lot, and he has shows potential. Oh, Rui Hachimura, rookie from last year. He shows a lot of potential. Of course, they got Russ. I mean, hopefully, and I, f- I feel like if Russ gives Bradley Bill the ball, then Bradley yeah. Bill can show off, and he yeah. can show off his talent, and he can prove to everybody, like, hey, you missed out on me. Like, I'm the next. I'm next up. I'm yeah. the player to watch. He has that chip on his shoulder, and he's just going to prove to everybody that, yeah, I'm just, I'm that, I'm that nice, and y'all should have been watching out for me. So the rookie is called, is named Denny Avita. Or, That's a yeah. You've been, you've been studying college basketball now? No, I have not. <laughs> now, it's not college basketball. That's international. Oh yeah, he is from international player. He's from, um, he's a European player. And, and I agree with that. I feel like the Wizards are a good team to look out for also because they also got a really good shooter in Davis Bertans. Yeah, that they signed like for like fifty six million. Yeah, probably be on the next videos about overpaid players. But anyway. <laughs> But yeah, this season we got a lot of like, you know, honorable mentions. There's a lot of people watch out for Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry's coming. Yeah, coming back from injury, Stephen Curry. Um, um talking about Andrew Wiggins. I don't uh, I'm not losing faith in him yet. But. Anyway, um, yeah. Um other players, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, D'Angelo Russell. Um yeah. Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid. Watch out for better or for worse. Um, um Fox. De'Aaron Fox, yes. I mean he got paid. 195 million, so he better show up. Yeah, there's a lot of players to look out for. Uh, Luca, who was already a player to look out for, now he's just about to take that next step. And that next step is, you know, top five in the league next step. And also, one more person, Colin Sexton. Yeah, Colin Sexton. But I wouldn't look out for him too much because you'd probably be looking in the trash because his team is terrible. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Listen, all I got to say is they was losing to the Knicks by 40 in preseason. So it's just preseason, though. <laughs> they was losing to the Knicks <laughs> by 40. Yeah. I know it's disappointing, especially going against the Knicks. It makes it more. Upsetting. I don't want to I don't want to look out for anybody under the Cavaliers. I want to turn off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all jokes aside, Colin Saxon is a great player. And if he. His ceiling can, you know, be matched up. I think that he can lead Cavaliers to at least the playoffs because Cavaliers is just LeBron and that's it for, you know, everybody else. Of course, there's other players on the Cavaliers, but we all know LeBron. Okay. Our last part, of course, we went over all the championship contenders, dark horses, surprise team players to look out for, but at the end of the day, this is what everybody wants. It's the NBA championship. So, Ja, I ask you, who is going to win it all? Well, I kind of juggled this a little bit between two teams. But, and this was the Nets and the Lakers. But 
I got the Nets. I got the Nets. I feel like, like, even though he's coming off of an injury, <laughs> even though he's coming off of a, like, you know, a, um, a season where he sat out because of injury, I felt like KD, both KD and Kyrie actually are trying to prove something to this world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the media has not been too kind with them. You know what I mean? And they have heard a lot. Kyrie heard a lot about leadership. KD heard about talking about, like, you know, ever since he moved to Golden State, he has had that bad look on him whatsoever. But you got to do what you got to do in order to try to build a legacy as a great player. And I feel like they're going to come on and show out how, like, you know, they do not need to do those things. They can work together to make, to prove people wrong. And, and burn I, Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they got the team, they got the, they got a really good team around them to make some noise. So I feel like they could take it. Um, I cannot be mad at that, but I'm going to have to go against that. One, let me just say why I don't think the Nets are going to win it. I think it's about chemistry and chemistry. Um, Kevin Durant hasn't won a chip by himself where he had to, you know, be the best player and there wasn't a system around him already. Golden State had a system. He just had to be there. You know, he didn't really need the ball. He just be there, shoot, play defense. That's all he needed. Go to State already had a championship. They had Steph Curry, Draymond, and Clay. They had Steve Kerr. Yeah. So, I mean, he like he obviously was the best player on that team. I'm not saying that, but yeah. now can he be the best player, like you know, leading wise and skill wise on a team? Uh, Kyrie, I feel like he's going to be the key, really, if they're going to win. Mm-hmm. Because we saw how Kyrie was when he was the second best player on the championship team. So I was with LeBron. Cold blooded, give him the ball in the fourth. And that's it, that's game. Really. A bona fide closer. That's it. But with <laughs> listen, Katie and Kyrie got a lot of issues. Okay. They got a lot of chemistry issues. They got a lot of teammate issues in the past. And I think that all that added up all their personalities added up and Kyrie what he's doing last year with the Nets and he was talking messed up with that locker room I just think that the chemistry is not gonna have them go that far so that being said that's why I got the defending champion Lakers I got LeBron winning this fifth so you know all your LeBron idiots can say he's better than Jordan uh I got AD um, really improving on his game, if he even can. I mean, he's pretty much skilled all out. Dennis Schroeder, Amatres Harrell, uh, Kuzma's there. Uh, KCP, he's a good shooter. Uh, <laughs> Frank Wood, who's a great coach, and they have a good system. And he really proved that he he's not just another LeBron coach, yeah. you know? He's actually an established coach, and he helped them really um, push them past that Denver series. If you look at his adjustments, mm-hmm. and he helped them beat the Heat in six. So, I mean, yeah, nothing really to say. I got the Lakers. Well, you know, I can't go against that. They have been together. They won a championship. They did it together. Like, you know, they have everything set in place. The Nets are still trying to find themselves. But I feel like the Nets are coming quickly. If you haven't watched them in the preseason – they're basically showing you that they're coming quickly. They're gelling quickly. This is scary. And mind you, this is their first season playing on the court, but yet they have, but they have been together before. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. And it's going to be a scary sight for that locker room. I'm the sorry, only- Joe Harris, that you got traded at trade deadline, but okay. <laughs> that's, that's what it's going to that's that's gonna that's- gonna look like. The only thing that they have to focus on really is um is the system, the coaching system, because of course they got Steve Nash. Yes, Steve Nash. Mm-hmm. Yet he has D'Antoni right beside him, and I feel like, and I feel like with the with the type of plays they got, D'Antoni can help Steve Nash implement whatever he wants. So that's all I gotta say. When they lose to Jimmy Butler in six, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. It's not Giannis, bro. It's not Giannis. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, first off, we got to do our predictions for opening night, do a rapid fire real quickly. 
since we are running low on time, we have passed our mark. But do you have your predictions ready, John? Yes, I do. Okay. Opening night, December 22nd. Warriors in the Nets, big time game. Who you got? The Nets. Okay. I got the Nets too. And of course, Battle of LA, the big brother and the ugly sister, Lakers and the Clippers. Who you got? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obvious here. The Lakers. <laughs> you got the Lakers? Well, the Clippers beat them open in like last, last year. Um, did you see what the Lakers have been doing to them in the preseason without Braun and AD? I was gonna say it's preseason, but then you hit me with that earlier, so now I can't say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think the Clippers keep us close though, because I think the Lakers do have to integrate those pieces, Dennis Schroeder, Mark Saul, and Montrezl Harrell. So I think it's going to be closer than what a lot of people think, but Ron and AD, Frank Vogel, they can pull it off. All right. I think that's time to wrap it up now. Uh, any final thoughts on our first episode? Um, kind of nervous still, but I feel like, I feel like we got it. I feel like we got this. I feel like this is just the beginning of many more to come. I was, I was talking about basketball, but yeah. Oh, this, oh. This, is, <laughs> this, this, this is, you know, just our beginning, you know, starting off slow or whatever. It's going to take us time to, you know, to get adjust to this. But be ready for our, our up and coming. You know, we're coming. I, I'm just looking for the end of the season already right here. I, I just can't wait because I think the Nets are going to just prove y'all wrong. But just like, you know. No, everybody, everybody's saying the Nets is, you know, the Nets, the Nets, the Nets. And just watch. Just watch. Because the I, most important thing about a team, more than skill, is chemistry. Yeah, I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting any team. I'm not underestimating any team. I'm just saying. Just why y'all also the same way how y'all looking at how we look at the Nets, y'all also down the Nets in some kind of form or way of fashion, just because that this is their first season on the court. I'm just saying, like, you know, things could add up. We've seen the Celtics do this with, with an old-ass KG, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. So, just be careful. That's all I got to say. All right. And they hold on to that championship forever. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, first episode is done with. I hope you all enjoyed our podcast. I hope you will come back for our next podcast. And, yeah, this is the start of a journey. And hope you all join us for our ride. But for now, thank you guys for watching today's podcast. Make sure you tune into December 23rd's podcast where we review opening night. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And once again, I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this was the Mind of Basketball Podcast.